test is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome everyone to our final um, webinar in the series, What's Working? Today we're going to be talking about social media as a marketplace with Teresa Lawler, who is the Senior Director of Revenue Marketing at Cloud Elements. And we also are going to be joined by our Director of Digital Product Development, Ryan Fox. And so today we are going to be covering social media and specifically around educators. And they are actually on social more than the average person. And so it's a really important channel. And as email becomes a channel that's really starting to be best used for like opt-in and specific communication programs, we found that social can be a really great tool to get new business, to engage with your current clients, and even grow existing accounts. So we're gonna start talking about um, specific ways to leverage social with Teresa. And then Ryan is going to finish up talking about success stories and really um, technical production um, aspects of getting your social right so that when you're out there and spending the money on targeted advertising, you're being really effective with it. So I think we have a really great um, presentation for you all today, and I'm so happy that you could join us. We also have on the line um, Kara Murphy, who is uh, the other part of the marketing team, and she will be monitoring any chat that comes in if you have technical questions, and she will also be gathering up our questions. And I neglected to introduce myself. Um, hello, everyone. This is Liz Tr Acton Trimeloff, and I'm the Director of Marketing for Agile Education, and I'm very happy that all of you could join us today. I'm going to start with a few housekeeping notes. Um, all of you in the audience are on mute, and uh, we're going to keep our questions to the end. And if you have a question on the right-hand side of your screen, you will see um, like a widget, a module, that will allow you to pose that question over, and Kara will help organize all of those so that at the end we have a really good question and answer session. Also, you will be receiving a follow-up email communication that will include a link to the recording of this webinar and um, some notes about different ways to stay connected with Agile. We have a monthly newsletter and we also have a survey and we would really appreciate it if you would take the time to give us your thoughts and input as we are very uh, much in the throes of building out our 2020 um, editorial and content calendar and we really would like to know what types of programming would be really valuable to you. So take the time, do that. Um, I know Kara loves to get responses and uh, hear directly from our audience what, what is going to be a really good use of your time. So with that, I would love to hand it over to you, Teresa, and if you would like to get us started and talk us through social media as a marketplace. Sure. Thanks, Liz. Um, first of all, thank you so much for asking me back uh, to present. I think I was here a while ago talking about paid social. So, um, hi everyone, Teresa Lawler, and uh, like uh, Liz said, we're going to talk about the social media marketplace, give you some high-level tips. Um, first, a little bit about me. So, I work for an API integration platform technology company here in Denver. Um, it's a startup, so we're super scrappy, and I get my hands very dirty and do a lot of things. So it's probably pretty similar to um, what you guys do on a daily basis. Um, I am, I head up our revenue marketing team. Um, right now, I am the team. <laughs> I'm looking for a couple people. Uh, and I manage paid, I manage social, campaigns, field marketing, and I measure the effectiveness of all this. Um, so it's basically my job to drive leads. Um, MQLs and ultimately pipeline for our sales team. And at Cloud Elements, we, uh, from a social perspective, both paid and organic, we consider them always part of the marketing mix um, that we use to drive demand awareness and thought leadership. And we'll talk a little bit about that. But first off, let's talk about the definition of a social marketplace. Um, so yeah, it's a place where cons both consumers and vendors can gather and they can easily and effectively communicate with each other. And I love this channel because it's always on. And while you can push information to people, you can also pull information from them as well. So it's very interactive. 
Um, and I'm going to show my age here, but I remember years ago when you would have social media and we did have the internet, I guess. But um, you'd have to call a support line. You'd have to mail a letter um, to customer service. Now, as an example, like Comcast, my cable provider, I can I can post like I can be disgruntled and post something on their social channel, and someone's listening, and they could potentially um, respond to me. So it's it's pretty cool. So. Um, why use it? And, and I would argue it's just one of the marketing channels that you can use and, and, it, and you should always use it because it's good at lots of different things. Um, it should help you increase brand awareness. Um, it should help you generate sales and leads. Um, you should be able to get your community to engage with you and your brand and grow that community. And while that's all happening, you should be generating traffic to your website as well. Um, so on this slide, you'll see some of the research, some, some research outlining some of the top goals that social marketers use. Um, and I can say I typically look at these as well. So always, um, always brand. Uh, we have always on campaigns for brand, but I am using it more now for sales and lead generation to set up meetings. Um, definitely to grow and increase um, engagement with our community. Um, and, and drive people to either landing pages or web traffic. So I would consider these some good ones that you should use for measurement. Um, so it's more than just, social's more than just getting your employees to follow you. And, and, and a lot of people think, you know, you put out a channel and then um, you have nothing but your employees following you. And, and obviously you wanna grow that. So but you want to grow it not so much just in volume, but like really useful audience. Um, so how do you how do you get the attention of those people who could potentially become new clients or influencers or help you generate more traffic? Um, you don't really need to create the next viral video to do that. Um, you really just need to focus on who those people are that are the best fit for what you offer and then craft your posts from this point of view. Um, from that, you'll, you'll develop more value, more credibility, um, you'll be trustworthy. Uh, and this isn't very far off from how you would probably um, market to uh, in other channels. You always need to know who your audience is. But here's some, some tips for getting started. Um, so focus on those personas, um, have a very good idea of who your current clients are, who your target audience is, and you should be able to articulate this. Um, so your entire company or whoever is involved in social should be able to articulate this. Um, and, and what's really helpful is you, if you map out their journey. So how do they come in um, and engage with you? What would they be looking for in terms of buying something? You know, map out those touch points, and then you can develop your content based on those. I also will research topics and issues that I think are important. So I'll set up Google alerts um, for specific topics, um, and I can use those to share as well. Um, also look at what your competitors are talking about. There's some tools out there that you can do use to automate this, but I'll just, um, you know, we, we compete with a couple of different other providers and I'll look and see what they're talking about too. Sometimes I'll, um, we will engage with the computer, uh, the competitors. Um, other times uh, we'll just kind of like um, use their subject um, on our channel as well. If you're gonna have your marketing team and your employees engage in social, you should probably create like a lightweight reference guide. So set some parameters for process and protocol, how they engage with the audience um, through social. And it's also a great go-to document um, uh, that they you can use to bill out a 30-day um, social media calendar. And that's one of the recommendations I have is, is just map out what you want to talk about on all LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Twitter. You can say the same things in a different way on each one of those channels. Um, train your internal staff on how and where to post. Um, and also how to join conversations that may be going on um, by adding more about topics or ideas or trends, that kind of thing. 
Uh, make sure you agree on what, what ha hashtags you'll be using. Um, you probably have one for your company, but there's also other ones out there that people would use to look at a certain topic, like hashtag API integration is one that I'll always make sure that we um, tag. Uh, be sure to join some social groups where your target audience is. So you need to go where they are um, and then contribute educational content. Don't go out there and try to sell them. Just like contribute um, some valuable information that can start a conversation and show that you're a thought leadership in that space. Um, you can follow people you don't know if they'll accept it, if it makes sense. Um, we have reps follow people they met at conferences. Um, so they're out at an event, they meet somebody, they leave LinkedIn, and they start following them. And then also follow people at your existing accounts. Like, be aware of what they're talking about. And then, once again, not every post needs to be original. Um, you can share other, other content, um, if it makes sense, and give them attribution. Just, hey, thanks for sharing this. This is something I saw. Um, when your content is shared, follow them and then thank them as well. And then, um, because I, I, I like once again Google alerts. Like set up a Google alert. Hey, you know this is relevant to this audience. Just wanted to share. I think it's it's always a win-win. So um, posting is good. Engaging is better. Obviously, if you're anything like me, you like to learn by example. Here's a couple of examples of event promotion. Um, we use um, social for event promotion a lot. Um, I usually include um, social posts in my campaigns immediately when I know we're attending an event. Um, then we'll get our booth number if we're actually sponsoring it. And then I'll say, hey, meet us at booth X. Um, typically, we try to have a speaking engagement at our events. So we'll talk about who's speaking, when they're speaking, what the topic is. So, um, and then we'll also use social as a way to send people to a landing page to set up a meeting during the event. Um, so I think it's a great way to leverage social. Uh, so get conversational, ask for topics about people that people may want to discuss, um, use it to set up meetings and, and tease out what you'll be presenting. Um, so I'm going to say it again. So speak to your best audience. So it, it does take time to do this. Um, and understanding that you just don't want to get sheer numbers. You want to build these valuable social channels. So you really need to attract the right people and keep them engaged. Um, so once again, this goes back to your personas or your target audiences. You're going to use those personas. If you do paid social, you're going to need those personas to do that. Um, but I would argue, depending on the channel, you'll also want, even if it's organic, you'll, you'll want to be speaking um, the language of the people that you're trying to target. Um, if you have a new piece of content that they may be interested in, like a webinar or there's a resource you can link to um, to help them do their daily job, um, add that to the conversation of your channel. Um, focus on creating a few select content pieces that you can um, specifically share with that ideal audience. And you probably already have some of these. I know that we have some, and then I'll, um, I'll create a condensed version, or I'll tease out a paragraph of that in the social post, and they can learn more by clicking and either going to a land page or directly to that piece of content. Um, and once again, it's okay to discuss current issues um, and how your organi organization addresses them. Just make sure that you have that protocol um, that you're, you've set up. Um, and um, I guess an example of how you could do this from a, 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 to get the attention of like a school or a, a district, um, you could pay them a compliment. Like so we, we do this uh, as well. It, it works for everybody. Where they, you know, did, did they do something that um, was newsworthy? So say congratulations. Um, did they win an award? You know, like, hey, they well deserved. Um, and if a hot prospect shows up um, and, and they have a challenge that they're talking about, you can share a link to a white paper or a blog post or any other resource that may help and also continue the conversation. So if this is starting to sound a little um, unwieldy and challenging, don't worry, it is. <laughs> but you're not alone. Um, there's some research that says um, that people are, are experiencing a challenge in trying to manage this. And it, it's social listening, you know, so being out there and listening to what people are talking about, it, it, is, it does take time and it is a process. 
Um, and once again, if you're going to spend this time, you just need to do it with your target audience. Um, so uh, engage both ways. Um, it, social listening involves reading comments. It, it noting topics that are getting the most likes and, and comments, as well as paying attention to the groups and the discussions that engage with your audience. There are tools um, to help do this. I, 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 in fact, you know, we do a lot, but we also, um, really, there's interns. There's also, I work with a demand agency, and part of what they do for us is social. Um, so I will use them specifically for like high value campaigns. And they will, they'll, they'll have tools where they'll, um, they'll be out there listening, doing social listening for us. Um, and then you need to have a strategy. Just don't randomly post willy-nilly. You, 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 there should be an end to the, uh, an end to the means. Um, you should have an understanding of how social fits within your organization's selling process. And it can help in your selling process. It just depends on how complex that is. Um, so you could potentially do direct selling, um, maybe in your case for reorders of like things you buy all the time, consumables, smaller ticket items. Um, other um, other ways that you could do it that may, maybe won't be direct is to connect um, via social with um, people that you know are the decision makers or the, the buying group um, and, and just uh, engage with them. Um, and then generating new contacts from targeted schools and, and districts, uh, form fills. Form fills are always a big, a good way to, um, drive people to, uh, to that particular thing. And then you can track those and you can follow up later in a different way. So, um, it's challenging. Don't give up. Uh, take it piece by piece. Know that you're not alone. Everyone else is in the same boat. Ask for help if you need it. Um, those would be my recommendations there. And, and another thing that you can leverage is, is your, um, your customers. Um, it sounds like, uh, from what Liz said, educators are online. Um, I mean, I would argue everybody's online and on social. I get on the train in the morning, everyone's in front of their phones, they're checking their Facebook, they're checking their LinkedIn, um, they're checking their email, um, Twitter, all that kind of stuff. So, um, they're probably playing, paying very close attention to what other educators are doing. If they're, you know, they're, you're, I'm telling you to follow them, they're probably following you. Um, so word of mouth is, is the most powerful promotional tool you can use. And it's really well suited for this type of promotion. So cus I found that customer success stories um, are really a great way to build credibility um, and let other educators know that they can trust you. Um, I would follow every profile for all your clients. And um, if they're out there uh, producing messages, then help amplify their messages. Um, and then applaud your clients' accomplishments and, and then welcome new clients. So if they see who you're working with, um, it's kind of a tried and true kind of third party um, validation point um, if they see that you're working with a certain customer and they're seeing uh, success there. Um, so make sure that you're following them, they're following you. Um, also make sure that your customer facing staff um, it's part of your brand voice. Uh, so this is where you should do lunch and learns and, and educate your staff on how they can engage with social and help grow your audience. Um, remember, social is about people. It's about being transparent and demonstrating that you have trust in your employees to engage in conversations. Um, have your staff showcase um, themselves or, or their messages directly during live events. We have people who are at events and, and we have them um, either post on their own personal channel or I can um, also post on our corporate channel too to, to kind of reshare. Um, and then any new announcements that you want, you could like create videos where they could be in their own voice or they could um, announce something in their own voice. So it's just a great way, once again, to put a face on a marketing message and on your company. And then lastly, you, you, you need to do this to understand how you're deriving results. So you need to measure. Um, and um, you, can, you can measure so many things, but make sure you're measuring things that really are meaningful to you. Um, we talked a little bit in the beginning about some metrics you can look at, um, but really a, a, a couple of things um, we can talk about here is what are your really important metrics? Um, I would argue that engagement is always good. We'll talk about that in a minute, but it might be to a direct sale. Um, 
So once again, it could be classroom level products or services, but um, don't under underrate the engagement and connections you can get with the schools or districts on your sales team's hot list. So we do this too. So we have a, a list of targeted accounts or named accounts, people we want to sell to. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a success when um, someone is following you or they're resharing a message. Uh, it shows your sales team that that, that company is engaged and it gives them a reason to reach out. So that could be a great metric for you. Um, so report out on these new prospects, um, growing engagement from your ABM targeting or your known contacts um, from existing customers or um, net new. So schools or districts that are net new to you. Um, you can track contact forms submitted to learn more about um, your organization. If you're doing a webinar, registration. So anything you can measure there, those are really good touch points for social. So, so don't um, forget about those. And then also the engagement metrics. So number of shares, number of likes on posts, new followers from your marketing and sales list, um, their website traffic. So you can look at your referrals from social and how they come to website. Um, so take a best baseline. I always try to take a baseline when I'm trying to do something new. And then watch your progress, measure your progress, and then optimize your social campaigns based on what's working and not. If you're not seeing a lot of referrals from social, then you need to make sure you got your right, you know, you got your link in there, you got your right hashtag, um, you're, you're doing engagement, gauging content, and they're coming. Um, and then be sure to set goals that drive both business revenue and um, I guess engagement as well. Um, while they may not impact your revenue directly, um, you can track influence. Um, so I track influence of uh, an opportunity. So when we go to event or we do social, I can track the influence that that particular campaign had on the sale if it goes all the way through. Um, and just remember, it's a piece of the puzzle. So you should always be using it in a campaign. I would argue social should always be a piece of it. Um, I have it written in my integrated campaign frameworks. Um, it's always social in the beginning, social during the middle of the funnel, and at the end, um, even in the culture customer um, and customer cycle as well. Um, so don't discount the value of it um, and um, really work with your organization to set the right expectations with your measurements. You don't have to measure everything, but look, maybe look at like five or six KPIs um, that make sense for your organization and then just report out on those and you'll see that there's some value there. So um, takeaways, uh, I wanted to leave you with those four things. Um, grow that useful audience. Um, make sure you're speaking to the right audience. It's not so much about numbers as the right people. Um, leverage your customers and market through them. Um, and then make sure you're driving results and measuring to those results. Um, so I'm going to let, that's it for me. I'm going to take it back to Liz. And thanks for having me. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you so much, um, Teresa. Really helpful information. And I appreciate so much that you tackled this topic for us because I think that so much of the challenge with leveraging social, using social can be just internally. So I, I really appreciate that you went into detail of how you make it happen um, in your uh, in your organization and that, that I think is just invaluable. So I really appreciate that. Um, so Ryan, I'm going to hand it over to you and I, you know, you and I have worked the last couple of days on, you know, what what we really wanted to present to complement everything that Teresa has uh, was planning on sharing with us. And he put together a really interesting, um, uh, some really interesting information on the, the nuts and bolts of, of the ads. And then he's going to share some customer success stories um, that, that we've had with our clients um, with our newer um, targeted social advertising product. So Ryan, um, if you're ready, I'd love to hand it over to you. Sure, Liz. Thank you. Um, and uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, as you can see, social media, from what Teresa was saying, is not something that should be considered. It should be a requirement if, it's, um, if your business is online. And most of you on the line, if not all of you, uh, most likely have a website. And if you do, you should also have a social presence. And uh, what I'm going to talk about are a few things as it pertains to helping that 
that social presence go uh, to the next level. Uh, so let's talk for uh, a few minutes about targeted advertising on social media versus just trying to organically grow it. And uh, I'm going to start by showing you an example of an ad on Facebook. So you all have a point of reference for the rest of our conversation. And then we'll move on to what the route of that ad looks like, you know, what happens through that process. Uh, and then, of course, I'm going to show you some info on targeted ads uh, on social versus just doing something organically uh, and relying on that solely. Uh, so that way, uh, when you go back, you can look at your own social strategy and see how potentially targeted uh, ads could could fit in. And then finally, uh, I want to talk a little bit about um, uh, an interaction we've had with a customer recently that should help paint a picture uh, about targeted advertising uh, in an extremely clear way. So, uh, Kara, if you could take me to the next slide. So, what you have here is a fairly simple breakdown of a fairly uh, simple Facebook ad. There's several different ad formats on social media, but I chose Facebook simply because almost all of you have a Facebook presence. And considering that probably over 90% now of people in the education space have a Facebook presence, uh, this would be very relevant. Uh, so what you have here is a common Facebook newsfeed ad. And a lot of people uh, that we work with think that the ad is solely for taking them maybe to a landing page or just on their website or just taking them to their Facebook page. When in reality, as you can see by the, the, the arrows here pointing to different areas of the ad, uh, they do both. It takes customers potentially, or prospects, potentially to your Facebook presence, uh, your social presence, and uh, or your your website, your landing page. Um, and I wanted you all just to see this as an example, because as we get into the data a little bit more with one of our customers, you'll see uh, how this becomes really important in understanding what's working and how you can tweak things. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a minute and then move on to the what happens with this ad and after you click on it and interact with it uh, with the route of the ad. So, Kara, if you could please, next slide. So, um, oh, or a couple of slides up. There we go. So what you have here is a real basic picture of what happens with that interaction. Either people click on the Facebook link in your ad or they click on um, the landing page link in your ad. And you know, there's, there's a couple of different strategies that people try to employ when they think about social media advertising. One is they're trying to grow their social media presence or two, they're ultimately trying to get conversions on their uh, website, on their landing page, right? Their online store, if you will. And so uh, depending on what your goal is, the way that people interact with your ad and how your ad is developed is extremely important because if you notice the, the top path takes them to the Facebook page and then from there, uh, they either can interact with your Facebook page and, and if it's an e-commerce set up, they can order things like through Facebook Marketplace or whatnot. Or if the goal is ultimately to get them to go to your website, then after they go to your Facebook page, then through like a pinned post or other things that you've done organically there, they then go to your website, um, which is where having the proper landing page link is extremely important. You don't want to just send them to your generic home page and have them navigate through. Uh, you know, there's the old adage in digital marketing that you have two to three clicks before people lose interest in whatever it is that you're doing. So as you can see uh, by this route, you know, they click from the ad to the Facebook, that's one. Facebook page to the website is two. And then hopefully you'll 
send them to some form where they can interact, and then that click would be the final three for the conversion. Or through the ad itself on Facebook, which is the bottom path, you'll notice that it goes directly to the landing page. And then obviously they can convert from there. So it's very important whenever you're designing uh, an ad to consider what your end game is and the shortest path there. Uh, with that said, I wanna get a little bit more into the data now that we've seen what an ad looks like and a couple of the paths that uh, the ad can take. So, uh, Kira, if you could take me to the next slide, that'd be great. Thank you. Uh, so let's talk a minute about targeted versus organic. You know, like a lot of us uh, in digital marketing know, uh, uh, even with websites, there's two ways to get visitors. One is just through regular search engine optimization, and the other is through paid advertising. That's how you get visitors. And uh, in a, I mean, obviously, there's other areas, referrals and things, email campaigns, et cetera. But um, for the most part, um, if you're looking to grow your, your presence, it's a lot like social. And, and this particular example here, uh, what I wanted to show you and point out was on the left, you'll see uh, a setup where it's a targeted ad going to roughly, let's say, 250,000 uh, impressions versus to the right is an organic um, setup to where you're just doing posts or potentially sending messages. And uh, there's, there's a caveat to this, and I want to go ahead and bring this out. Facebook right now has um, basically set up a policy to where you're only allowed to send 200 messages uh, a day. And so over the course of a month, you're looking at reaching out, okay, um, in a targeted fashion, picking people and sending the message. The most is around 6,000 people. Um, as to where whenever you're doing an ad on Facebook, you can send it to as many people as you want. Essentially, you tell Facebook, here are the people that I want to go after. And not, I'm not talking about necessary personas. I'm talking about exact people. You can say, I want to go after customers one through 10 and prospects one through a thousand. And you send this information to Facebook and Facebook will only target those, those users. So as a result, anything that comes back from Facebook in the way of clicks or overall impressions are the highest quality that they can possibly be because it's only going to the people that you want. It's not being shown to people that are um, fraudulent. You know, a lot of there's a lot of accounts out there that are fake accounts set up to be lookalikes. It's not going to someone who uh, hasn't updated their profile in three years, um, and it's not going uh, to people that um, have have basically chosen to be um, like these public profiles. So, and in addition, it does go to people that are uh, set up their set up their accounts to be private, or they set up uh, their accounts where they don't say necessarily what they do. Um, so, it's a very good way to make sure that your message is getting to the right people in the right way. Uh, organically, obviously, that can take a long time. Uh, as Teresa pointed out, you know, there's a lot of work involved. And uh, for a lot of us, we either don't have the time uh, or we don't have the resources, the staffing to do that. So, you know, for a few dollars, what you can do is, is have social media, in this case Facebook, target a list of people that you want and not have to worry about it. Uh, as a result of that, not only do you get more conversions, more views on your on your Facebook page, but you also get more visitors from your website, clearly. Um, and and these numbers here that you see on the on the page are relatively conservative for the education industry. Um, but when it comes to the targeted piece, because it's such a larger quantity of people that you're able to reach, 
um, in a such such a shorter amount of time. You know, sometimes it can take years to get your your social presence where you would like it to be, and organically. But whenever you do a targeted ad campaign, it can take a couple of months. Maybe it can take a couple of weeks, depending on how large your audience is. So uh, it really is a great shortcut to get your social presence out there and get people uh, interacting. So some of the advantages on the left, as you can see, is uh, you are a higher priority in the, the feeds, the social feeds of your followers, uh, because Facebook is placing a higher ranking on your social presence simply because you are getting more visits. Granted, they're paid for, but Facebook doesn't care about that. The numbers are the numbers. So, uh, and of course, because you're getting more website visits, Google and other search engines are going to rank your website higher. So from an SEO standpoint, you're also helping your website come up um, in, a, in a better place than it, than it would have if you were just doing, doing organic. And then ultimately, the, the real meat on the bone here is more conversions, you know, more dollars in your pocket from running campaigns versus just trying to do a daily post and hope that it gets picked up or sending out like, you know, here, 200 messages a day uh, and hope that Facebook doesn't um, see you as spamming and put you on a 24 to 48 hour hold. Um, and, you know, when you look at this, you know, these advantages, it starts to become very clear that if you have a few extra dollars to spend, then this is where you could you could quickly go and see a, a fast return. Now, in the case of uh, social media, when you start looking at it from this targeted ad perspective, it becomes not so much, um, as we mentioned earlier, something you should do um, or something you would like to do, but something you should do. Uh, and it makes sense to add this to your marketing mix. It makes sense to add this to your sales process, your overall strategy to build your online presence. Um, and that's why obviously so many companies around the world do it. So uh, Kara, if you could take us to the next slide, I'd like to show them uh, some information we have from a, a customer. So there is a customer, and like a lot of us in marketing, uh, we put on events, whether they're online events like this webinar, or their in-person events like uh, perhaps lunch and learns or trade shows, things like that. And uh, we had a, an experience with a customer where they were looking to host in-person events uh, around the U.S. at different times, and they were wanting to go ahead and try to book out in advance as many of those as they could. And so they came to us and. Uh, said, what can you know? What can you do to help? So we qu quickly went to uh, to the drawing board with them, and the goal obviously was event registration, as you see here. And based on their audience, and based on what we were finding their uh, overall experience or user experience to be online, we thought Facebook makes the the most sense. Right. There's obviously other channels out there, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, et cetera. But what they were doing for the timeline and a lot of other uh, attributes, Facebook made the most sense. So uh, we ran a campaign uh, over about a month long. And uh, I know some of this data may be hard to see, but um, it really speaks for itself. Uh, the results were that we sold out all their events. And we sold out their events earlier than uh, the customer had expected and earlier than they had ever seen before. Um, the insight also that they gained through our analytics and through our reporting helped them identify other opportunities in other regions that they hadn't necessarily considered before. And that's something else to think about when you're doing social media is to leverage the data, as Trisha had mentioned earlier, to to understand what your your prospects, what's your customer, what your uh, you know the people that you're going after, what do they do with with your brand online? How do they interact with it? 
Um, obviously, they increased their marketing database, which was huge for them um, because now they have more to work with for, for other marketing efforts. And then naturally, they had a greater and quicker return on investment, uh, having sold out of the events. Now they can look at adding more events to their lineup than they had had before uh, and going from there. Now, some of the key drivers to this were that we were very targeted in our approach. We didn't just do a generic ad uh, or set of ads. This is where being targeted is, is extremely helpful. We segmented uh, the audience and made several lists and based on different demographics. Uh, we also did geo-targeting, obviously because there were different areas of the country the events were at. We went ahead and, and set up ads for those uh, particular areas with a certain radius around to target uh, certain people. And then of course, based on the list segmentation and geo-targeting, we were able to personalize the content uh, at a much higher degree than you would uh, normally if you were just doing a generic national campaign. So uh, by doing that, and then of course having a very effective landing page and the uh, user experience, they were able to see the results that we outlined earlier. And you were only, they were only able to get that because they did a targeted ad. It wasn't just based on persona, it was actually to the specific individuals that uh, they were looking for. And that's one of the things that, uh, one of the things that Agile really uh, is very proud of is that our database of people in the education space is updated uh, very regularly. It's extremely accurate, extremely large, comprehensive, and because uh, there's so many attributes to the list uh, of people that we have, we were able to segment those lists, be very specific, uh, and the results are very clear. Uh, when you look at the table on the right, uh, kind of a before and during, so that middle column without agile was uh, represents what they were doing as far as results organically the month before our campaign, and then with our campaign, uh, you see the difference. And it's you know, it's funny. I was actually going to do a bar graph to rep to, to really show the difference, but because the numbers are so extreme. Um, you couldn't see the without agile uh, bars. They were just so minuscule compared to um, the agile. But something to consider is the pull through. So for example, when you look at the, um, the second uh, row down where it talks about organic reach, while we did do paid targeting, the organic reach as you can see there, it went from 315 to over 2,000. So more people were seeing it because Facebook was placing it in like in the newsfeed as suggested pages and other things. Because it was getting so many impressions and so much interest, it started, Facebook started organically placing it in front of them as well. So there was a lot of pull through in addition to what they were doing as far as uh, being targeted, which is fantastic. Um, obviously, when you look at the overall impressions, um, the paid impressions, they ended up with almost 170,000 impressions, people that actually got a chance to see it. And when you look at the uh, line above, which is total organic impressions, um, it's 947. Now, obviously, organic impressions with our ad um, turned out to be almost 4,500 that were organic. But overall, when they were paying for it, 170,000 compared to 947. And you'd have to be a mathematician to see that that is a huge variance uh, for spending a few dollars on targeting exact people to get very specific results. Um, so with that said, I don't want to take up a lot of y'all's time, obviously, we're all very busy people, but uh, I hope that this information outlines how important and social media can be, but another step further is how effective targeted advertising 
on social media can be. When you have almost 3 billion people on Facebook um, and you can target individuals, uh, then your return can be enormous as by shown here. So uh, with that said, I'll uh, get off my, my podium here and hand it back over to you, Liz. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan, very much for that. And yeah, I think that um, you've definitely illustrated how targeting is beneficial in this in social media. I think that we all really have a good understanding of how it works um, using other channels, uh, email especially, and that definitely applies as well to social. One of the things for me that's super important is I always want to make sure that I'm connecting my salespeople with the right person, but also at the right time. And I think that that is also a piece of this, is if you're being really targeted and efficient with your outreach, um, here we're talking about social, you're doing a better job of uh, being uh, being efficient with your salespeople's time as well. So that's um, that I think is a, a, a really important side benefit. Um, I Kirsten over a couple questions for you all. So we're going to go ahead and move into some questions, and then um, once I go through these, Kara, if there's any others, um, I'll, I can hand it over to you, or you can send them over to me. But I've got a few for Teresa and a few for Ryan, and I'll kind of go back and forth if you don't mind. Um, so uh, Teresa. Because Ryan went into detail in that last slide about a specific campaign but the, and, the, and showing the numbers, I'm wondering if you could share um, you know, the other side of it, of a successful campaign that you've run on social. You know, was it content? Um, was it a registration? And the, how you put the, the communication and the messaging together? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, we are in the midst of uh, a campaign right now so it's a little bit more of um, social but uh, um, I, I'll get on my pedestal and so I, I believe in and always doing integrated campaigns um, and social should always be a part of it but this is really interesting you may even want to take this idea and and uh, for, for some of you and, and run with it so we do a state of the API integration report every year so we are in the process right now. We just kicked it off um, and fielding the survey. So what we do is we get people to answer the survey in the industry, and then we publish, we write a social and social posts. Um, and we also, um, I also set up a, um, uh, I call it a promo packet for uh, internally for our um, for our uh, salespeople and everyone in the company. So to help them, um, I, I basically just gave them language that they can copy and paste into social and share with their um, their network. Um, and we did this. We started this last Thursday. So I think there was one email that went out and then a bunch of social. Um, and we're trying to get 500 submissions by mid-January, and a week in, um, we've got half of that already. And so uh, social was a really good component. Um, maybe it didn't drive all those submissions, but it, the fact that you've built this awareness and you've targeted the right people to fill out the survey, like Ryan talked about, um, that that's uh, I would say that's a it's great success and then we take that content like I said and create a report and then we will do the same when we have the report so good idea for you to steal awesome thank you very much yeah assets and research and integration um, winning combo thanks for sharing that with us um, oh you know okay so we've got another question and you you touched a little bit on it just now internally. Uh, internal teams engagement you, you talked about lunch and learns and you just talked about a mm. promo an internal promo pack could you just give us you know just really like nuts and bolts like what what you do to prepare um, your internal team when you're going to market with a campaign um, and you know spe anything specific you might do around social um, yeah this this person yeah. is struggling with getting their internal team engaged thanks um, well, we use um, we use Slack. We use a Slack channel. Um, I find that's most effective in our organization. Um, so when we're getting ready to launch a social campaign, um, 
like I said, I will um, uh, put together what's called a promo kit. And really, it's like on Twitter, here are two messages that you can copy and paste. It has the hashtags in it, all that kind of, you know, here's the creative you can use. Um, here's, here's the one for Facebook. Here's the one for LinkedIn. Um, and it basically you just copy and paste those and put them on their profiles, um, to help us with the social. Once they get a little bit better at it, they can do it themselves. Some people may just want to do it, but I'll post that onto our Slack channel. We'll also, um, I'll also mention this at like our town halls. We have town halls, like here's what's going on this month. We're running this paid campaign, but we also have the social to support it. Please go in and reshare. Like I've connected with all of the employees, obviously. And so when they see me post something, they'll go ahead and reshare it as well. Um, and then we have like a very light, like, here's what you should do, what you shouldn't do on social. And we'll have like a lunch and learn every once in a while to bring people in and, and say, here, if you want to learn more about how to do that, here's how to do it. Um, yeah, those are the, the, the uh, just a few ways. Thank you. Um, let's see, Ryan, um, if I could cue one up for you. Um, can we sure. use our house list for an agile sh social campaign? No, it's a, that's a great question. And uh, yes, you know, when, when, when a person or uh, organization does targeted social media advertising, that's exactly what you would like to use is uh, your or start with is your your house list your email and you send that to in this case Facebook and Facebook will actually go out there and target those email addresses associated with Facebook accounts which ties into what I mentioned earlier about you don't have to worry about uh, targeting the wrong people or uh, you know look like audience for your uh, people can, you know, not necessarily be qualified, and like a lot of us do, where we don't put our uh, roles and uh, company names, things like that, in our Facebook profiles. By you know having the email address and their logins, then yes, it's it's a great way to to target, and that's normally the most effective way. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, we've got two more questions that I know of. Um, so I'm going to team up to you both um, right now. I'm not sure. So Teresa, I'm thinking this one's better for you. Does social influencing influence purchasing and by how much? So I'm guessing like if you know of any stats. And then Ryan, I'm going to come back to you. Um, if you would share what are some of the most common questions that you get um, from the clients that you've worked with on social. So Teresa, if I could, if I could ask you to share any, any data points or information you know about how much purchasing is happening through social or how we, do we know, you know, is it, is it an influential um, in purchase decisions? You know, I'm trying to think about where I saw this stat, but I, I I think I saw something where it's about, you know, 75% or so of people who are shopping, um, they use social media um, as a way to, you know, make their purchasing decision. Um, I think anecdotally, like as I'm sitting on a train or I'm, you know, waiting at the doctor's office, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm scrolling through Facebook, I'm doing the same thing. So I got to believe that that's pretty accurate. Um, you know, social is like the new word of mouth. So we are mm -hmm. new, um, but like it's word of mouth. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if it, that number is that high. Um, and then, yeah, I think like reviews and comments and, and feedback that you see on social. Um, I mean, I see Facebook ads for like, you know, clothes or whatever and my, that my friends have fav favorited or shared. And I'm like, oh, yeah, and it's a stitch, stitch Fix is a great example. Like, yeah, I'm going to look at that. Um, they recommended it. Uh, so, yeah, I think. You know that's got to be half. I bet half the people looking at that stuff are um, are are you know buying things. And I think it's the same in business, to be honest. Um, you know, yeah. you're following people and influencers and that kind of thing. So. And that and thank you because that one of the things I always try to keep in mind is you know educators are people, and so that that definitely makes sense that you know if they're you know, ordering stuff from Target or Stitch Fix, that if, you know, there's a direct selling or a direct response, 
maybe it's you know register for a webinar that shows up on their Instagram or their Facebook ad, yeah, I'm sure that just like anybody else, they would they would if it's interesting, they'll take action. So that makes sense. Um, and, I, and thank you for that too, because I think that some some of what we've talked about is like internally, and and so from an executive level, some of these you know data points and, and how you present it can really help you secure funding and support and resources. So thank you for that very much. Um, so Ryan, would you? Um, it, we've got about three minutes left. Maybe we'll you can bring us home and and talk about some of the common questions that you get, and um, you know just answer those questions for all of us um, here today. Sure. Uh, you know, anytime I think of, uh, of our customers and prospects and, and the big questions, um, they're almost always around ad and campaign best practices. And uh, obviously, they're looking to get the best return on investment and, and have the most effective campaign and the most effective ads. And uh, normally, what I share with them, and I'll highlight this with the group, is uh, Think about the the user experience, as Teresa alluded to earlier. Think about what is going to happen. You know, most of the people that are going to be viewing your ad or your content are on their mobile phone. So think about an ad that needs to be touch friendly, that needs to be able to be read on two inches by two inches, you know, from a foot to two feet away from their face. Uh, the landing page experience needs to be considered the same, mobile friendly, easy to use. Um, and so when I think of kind of the, those basic questions, it really is, you know, and everyone wants to know, what's the secret sauce? And uh, if you could just put yourself in the shoes of the user, then nine times out of ten, uh, you're on the right track, and, and that's what we like to see from our customers. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, that's and it, that's another yeah thing that we um, were able to really support our clients on is just optimizing, being super efficient, um, as well as being effective. Um, we've got one minute left. If there were other questions, um, we can it, we're going to send out a follow up email tomorrow, and and we'll look through any additional ones that we got. We can get back to it individuals, but if, if there's something that we think is, is really um, a good piece of information to share with everyone, we'll include it in our message. You will get uh, a link to the recording of the webinar and then Kara's survey. And also, um, we have between now and the end of the year, we have a special promotion on our social advertising if you'd like to, to check it out and try it. So look for the details on that to come with your email as well. And thank you all very much for your time and for joining us. And I, a huge thank you to Teresa, because I know that um, you have a, a lot going on and on your plate. That also makes you a really valuable um, expert and subject matter expert in this. So I, I appreciate that you took the time to share with everyone. And Ryan, thanks for really walking everyone through details and how, you know, the, the, the numbers, you know, how much. Um, things can can perform better if if you're really targeted um, through social as well as your other channels. So thanks everyone, and this is our final webinar for 2019. We'll be back in January. Um, it looks like we're going to have a webinar, um, the real cost of bad data. So look for um, invitations to that as we continue to pull that together, and please share your thoughts on what else we can bring you. Um, that will help you uh, grow your business in 2020 via the um, email uh, survey link that you will get. Thanks, everyone.